Good afternoon. My name is Mark Levine, and I'm the Deputy Director of your New York State Association of Counties. On behalf of our President, Mike Zerlo, and our Executive Director, Stephen Aquario, I want to thank you for joining us for a webinar on the current cyber threat landscape, cybersecurity awareness, and available CISA resources. As the nation's cyber defense agency, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency stands ready to help organizations prepare for, respond to, and mitigate the impact of cyber attacks. When cyber incidents are reported quickly, we can use this information to render assistance and as warning to prevent other organizations and entities from falling victim to a similar attack. CISA's speaker will also include an overview of CISA's current Shields Up and Stop Ransomware initiatives. This webinar is part of a cybersecurity webinar series being co-sponsored by NISAC, the New York Conference of Mayors, the Association of Towns, the New York Municipal Insurance Reciprocal, and the Center for Technology and Government at the University of Albany. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted and available on our NISAC website later today. Just uh, search NISAC webinars and it will be posted on today's date. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question panel in your webinar dashboard and I will take them up after the speaker finishes his presentation. It is my pleasure now to introduce this webinar speaker. Michael Hastings is a Department of Homeland Security Cybersecurity Advisor assigned to Region 2 working out of Albany, New York. Michael has extensive industry experience to include roles as Vice President of IT Risk Management for a national commercial bank and several leadership and operational positions in cybersecurity, IT governance, and network operations in regional and national organizations. He is also an Army veteran of two Middle East deployments, most recently as a Division Chief Information Officer. Michael holds an MBA in Technology and Management and is a Certified Information Systems Security Professional. Michael, thank you for your service, and thank you for joining us today and lending your expertise to our attendees. Michael. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Mark, for the introduction, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's great, great, great to be with you here this afternoon. Um, I may have had the pleasure with working with many of you in the recent past, and uh, it's good to, be, good to be here with you this afternoon. Uh, as, as Mark mentioned today, uh, CISA, CISA's mission is to defend today and secure tomorrow. Next, please. A little bit about our vision. We're really looking to secure and develop a resilient infrastructure for, American pe for the American people and for, of course, our information and our technology. Uh, our mission is to lead the national effort looking to understand and reduce risk to cyber, to our cyber assets and physical infrastructure. Uh, and also looking at, you know, not only today, you know, what, what are the current threats that are coming, but to look out into the horizon tomorrow at, uh, you know, what are our longer term risks and what, what can we do to address them uh, in advance? to mitigate uh, any possible uh, risk or damage going forward. Next. This is cr uh, focused on critical in industry, uh, critical infrastructure, and you know, what do we consider critical infrastructure? Really, the 16 sections that are described on the side, um, government facilities, our educational power, those are all those are all in our sectors of uh, critical infrastructure, uh, building and maintaining our partnerships, and and very importantly to share timely and actionable information as well as collaborate with our with our partners 
that are here in New York State and across the nation. Next. A little bit on Shields Up. You know, what is, some of you may have heard uh, a little bit about Shields Up going on, and what exactly do we mean by that? Well, what we do know is that the, it, the, uh, the situation that's happening overseas, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, uh, there's been a, a serious uptick in malicious cyber activity against the U.S. And uh, also, you know, these other nations around, uh, you know, Russia's partners, their, you know, their cyber criminals, proxy organizations, it really, it's a response also to the unprecedented economic costs that are being uh, imposed on Russia by U.S. our allies and partners. Right now, uh, they're active. Not only are they actively exploring options for potential cyber attacks, but these cyber attacks are, are in progress right now. We're looking and asking for every organization, large and small, to be prepared, be aware, and be prepared to respond disruptive cyber events. Next. As the nation's cyber defense agency, this is standing ready to help organizations prepare, respond, and mitigate. We're also asking that any sort of anom anomalous activity that, that you see out there to uh, you know, let us know, along with our agency partners, 24-7 because many times we have information on similar attacks or we have mitigations uh, along with our other, our other partners on what we can do to block or unlock uh, some of these incidents that are happening. Uh, for example, recently we were contacted by one of our stakeholders in Puerto Rico who became uh, the subject of a ransomware attack uh, they contacted us, we contacted our partners at the FBI, and we had, they, they, the FBI actually had a key, and they were able to unlock the ransomware. So we were able to mitigate that activity and, of course, avoid any sort of extortion attempts on that side. Next. Recommending that everyone uh, adopt that heightened sense of posture and to reduce the likelihood of a damaging intrusion, looking, you know, what steps can we take to quickly detect the potential intrusion? And also, you know, let's be prepared to respond if and when uh, an intrusion happens. Looking to, as part of the program, to maximize the organization's resilience, uh, to defend and, and be basically be able to stand up and, and stop anything that may happen as part of Shields Up. Next, corporate leaders and, and agency heads have an important role to play in ensuring that their agencies and organizations are ready. We're asking that the CISOs, you know, chief information security officers, that also goes down to you know, security team leaders, system administrators, that they be empowered in the organization, uh, have a seat when strategic decisions and plans are being made, uh, lower the reporting thresholds, and also participate in their tests of response plans. Focus on business continuity, and also, you know, have a solid plan in place. Next. Ransomware response. We're going to go a little bit into some of the, you know, some of the many threats that are out there, but ransomware is always right in front of us. Uh, you know, at the at the operational level, the, per, the worker sitting at their desk, at their computer, what should they do? You know, what should we do when something happens? How do we determine, does everyone know, or, you know who to call, what systems were, were potentially impacted, how to isolate that? Of course, you know, disconnecting devices from the network. Um, you know, that's very important. Triaging. Uh, you know, who are our teams? Who are our internal, external teams that would happen? And of course, you know, what, what do we have in place to be able to take an image of the system, capture the, capture the memory, capture the potential indicators of compromise, and share them with our partners for possible decryptors or to add to our database of knowledge? 
Also thinking about our family members. You know, we're out there, the internet of things uh, coming in everywhere, whether it's cameras, uh, uh, you know, smart devices in our home, multi-factor authentication. We recommend that that be done. It's, you know, it's not 100% foolproof, but it adds an important, an important step to uh, securing ourselves. Updating our software. If you see, you know, that come up, the updates come on over your phone, uh, take a close look. If it's applicable, you know, hit, hit those updates. And of course, think before you click. Strong passwords and a password management system are definitely things that we can and should take to protect ourselves and our families. Next. Additional resources. CISA also offers uh, free cybersecurity tools. We have a known exploited vulnerabilities catalog on our Shields Up website. Um, if you're involved in, in mitigations of network exploits and, and, and vulnerabilities, please take a look at that. Um, right there, those are a list of known exploits that are constantly being used over and over again. Emergency communications, and a little bit about our cyber hygiene and web scanning service uh, coming up as well. Next, threats to critical infrastructure. Next, what are, what are some of the top threats today that we're facing? Of course, we mentioned a little bit about ransomware, but specifically, there's this uh, Royal Ransomware phishing email specifically aimed at state, local governments. Uh, looking to, to get someone to click on these, uh, deploy the COBOL strike, and this type of ransomware is, le is leveraging the Log4j that we've heard a lot about recently. There's also some of the familiar names down below, Conti, CryptoLocker, um, Robinhood, Malware. What have we heard recently about malware? There was a, a big one that came out uh, earlier this month, an advisory on ESXi, targeting VMware servers globally. Um, very, very, uh, very, very dangerous exploit right there. Remote at access, and again, the Internet of Things target, and also targeting industrial control systems, our water systems, uh, those things out there are starting to be increasingly targeted by, by malware. Advanced persistent threat. This has hit our government organizations um, persistently, really. This uh, energetic bear, aviation kits, uh, those are out there. You know, we think we see them, they're cleaned up, and then they're hiding, they're hiding in the network uh, waiting to come back again. We may have heard recently about um, KillNet, the de distributed denial of service. There's been a, a, a concentrated campaign by Russian cyber criminals to target government agencies and healthcare with this KillNet uh, DDoS attacks. We haven't, um, you know, we've seen a few that have come in this area specifically. But overall, uh, so far, we've been, we've been well postured to protect against that one. Next. In the news now, also, we're hearing about, you know, domestic violence attacks against electrical substations. How these are increasing. 2022, there were 25 physical attacks. Um, also, what Department of Energy has reported is uh, 57 reports of suspicious activity, 89 sets of vandalism in 22. In February, uh, there's also two, two individuals were charged with looking to uh, basically plan and implement a cascade, a cascading local power grid failure, a number of coordinated attacks. Now, you know, our power infrastructure uh, in government, um, you know, there's many, many municipalities out there generating power. Uh, you know, we're increasingly looking at that and trying to mitigate potential threats against, against those sorts of attacks. Third-party vendors, service providers, of course, supply chain compromise are, are a number of the current threats uh, to, to our cyber and information infrastructure. Next. 
what organizations specifically are being targeted? We look over to the right, uh, government facilities are number one. Um, right now, the top five government industries, healthcare and education. What are they looking for? Um, you know, obviously information, they're looking for money. So as government agencies, county agencies, uh, we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing that out there, uh, we're seeing it happen. We, we need to be vigilant against those. Next. New trends, double extortion. In the old, in the old paradigm, victim's data was encrypted. If the, if the organization or the victim refused to pay, the files were destroyed. The new paradigm is now the data gets exfiltrated before encryption. So um, now the attackers will release small portions of data basically to uh, you know, put someone into the corner. Yes, we have your data. Here's some a piece of it. If you don't pay us, all of it is going to come out. So they will, uh, some organizations will be threatened to pay. And then, uh, you know, the hackers will turn around and sell the, inf sell the information to a third party. So there's, you know, they're making money, making money both ways. Next. You prepare for, mitigate. Of course, you know, are our staff trained and prepared? Do we have awareness and education for our users? You know, not something that's just once a year, but are we doing regular awareness for our user base, how to recognize these phishing emails? That's really where a lot of this begins, are these sophisticated emails that come in, encourage our users to click on and then download different types of malware or advanced persistent threats. We touched briefly on knowing how to contain systems. Um, how do we prevent it from spreading to the network shares? You know, are we segmenting our networks? Do our, you know, do we know our most critical assets and data? Are they separated and easily blocked off from potential uh, potential compromise? Next, forensics. You know, we're getting the calls. You know, we 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 recovered from an attack or we blocked an attack. But, you know, what information or what resources do we have for forensics? What's the cause? What is it? And how did they get in? And then, of course, recovery. So, you know, we have to look at those things as part of our incident response and our post-incident phase as well, which is, uh, you know, our incident response plan. What did we learn? You know, what can we do better? Next. Looking at zero trust. You know, we may have heard, you know, you know, some conversations about zero trust, but really it comes down to assuming that, you know, assuming that there could be malicious intruders already in our network. How do we find them? One is for our network, you know, it's really everyone's responsibility, but also, you know, do we know what normal traffic looks like? Do we know what, uh, what traffic's coming in, what traffic's coming out? And then here at the bottom, of course, right, you know, right, right at the keyboard level, if there's a non anomalous activity being seen, pull the plug. Denying access by default, or you know, if you're out there, you know, whether you're an organizational leader, a team leader, a network uh, administrator, we should really look at um, you know, limiting access. Limiting access to our users, you know, not because of you know anything. Sometimes uh, there may be there may be some compromise that um, is not not malicious. It just could be by mistake. So users who maybe have been someone's been with the organization for a long time, been moving around, uh, you know, take a look at, at 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 levels of privilege within the organization, and you know, users as as a rule should just have the amount of privilege on the network to, to do their job. Limiting, limiting access privileges to the level that's needed to do the job. That goes a long way as well. Next. On the executive decision-making side, you know, what, what should we think about? Of, uh, in our advice from the FBI, 
They're saying, you know, what, you know, what happens if there is a demand for payment? Do we pay the money? Can we pay the money? Are there legal restrictions against it? Right now, I believe at the national level, there is, uh, there is basically legislation that's moving forward that's going to block organization, publicly funded organizations from paying ransomware. Um, and you definitely do not want to do that. We all know the reasons why. Um, and that puts additional, that puts additional, um, you know, responsibility onto us to make sure that, well, we can't pay now to get our data back. So we have to make sure that our systems are, are being secure. You know, other things to think about. We talked about, I was talking with a few organizations recently about, um, you know, key systems and business impact assessments. You know, when, an, when, the, when there's an interruption to the network, which systems, which systems do we need to bring up first and which systems are key to restoring a minimum level of critical operations? You know, do we have to have payroll up? We have to have this database up. So we need to know, you know, what's the impact to our operation in case of an interruption and what systems should, should come up first. Cyber insurance. The, the cyber insurance, of course, they're coming in, they're asking the same questions. Uh, you know, what cybersecurity standard are we using? Uh, you know, what, what is our incident response plan? So we get ahead of this. And once these, once these items have been addressed, they will answer a lot of the questions that some of your cyber insurers may have. May have. Financial risk um, and brand risk. And, you know, for an agency or for a company, you know, things, things that we need to think about. You know, who's going to address these questions in the event, in the event of an incident? Next. Some of the resources that CISA can offer uh, in, in partnership with, with some of the other, some or, some of the organizations that we work with. One of my, uh, you know, one of my favorite ones really is our cyber, cyber security evaluation tool. There's a couple of different modules associated with this, but what it really is, is um, it can be self-administered. It's basically an evaluation tool with a couple of different modules. And we can see here the time that it takes, uh, can take two hours or a little less, but really, uh, you know, at any level of the organization, if you're if you're operating a network or a segment of a network, um, where, you know, where where are we in our program? Are we focusing on what's important? Uh, do we have a one, two, three year roadmap to get us to where we need to be? And importantly, you know, where do we stand compared to our peers? If we're an organization of a hundred people, if we're an organization of a thousand people, you know, what are our what are our peers doing downstate or upstate um, as, as far as their cybersecurity program? So really, it starts out with with an evaluation tool. Um, our our partners at the MSI SAC have a similar uh, tool that works uh, answers the same questions. Next slide. One of the modules is the ransomware readiness assessment. So we'll go through uh, really, you know, the key pieces of the network, look at recognized standards, best practices, and provide a written report and analysis that presents the assessment results. And, and most importantly, you know, recommendations on possibly, you know, where we should focus our efforts going forward protect our particular agency from a potential ransomware readiness attack. Next. There's also a module of the external dependency. Similar, but instead of focusing on ransomware, it's looking at, uh, looking at our external dependencies. What are, you know, who are our key relationships? Who are our key vendors? Uh, what are they doing? What does their cyber program look like? And what would happen if their ability to deliver their support gets interrupt, interrupted? How can we continue to manage and deliver the services that, that are required? Next. 
fishing campaign assessment uh, offered by CISA. This is where really a lot of, we mentioned earlier, this is where a lot of the vulnerabilities come in. You know, are users aware? Are they, do they know what to look like? What these malicious uh, emails look like? Fishing campaign assessment, very valuable. Next. Next. Cyber hygiene. Um, let, let's mention that, let's talk about that a little bit. Vulnerability scanning. Um, what this is available also, what CISA can do is look at from the outside, uh, what does, what does the, your network look like on the outside from your active public IP space? What systems do we see are running? Uh, what potential vulnerabilities might be out there? And we can deliver a secure report on a regular basis that shows what we see from the outside. Uh, this is meant really to complement your existing network defense services, but it's another eye, another perspective on what can be seen from the outside. Next. Web application scanning. This is also um, looking at your network from the outside, but focused specifically on web, web applications. Next. And a few other ones that we have available, uh, cybersecurity exercises and um, different sorts of tabletop exercises. You know, if you have a plan, have, have, we, have we run it through the paces? Do we have our other partners involved? And you know how can we make it? How can we make it close close any potential gaps that might be out there? Incident coordination, and then also field-based cybersecurity advisors uh, such as myself. And I also wanted to mention uh, Jim Marcello. We have a physical security um, advisors also that go around and do you know physical readiness assessments. If you have you know, different sorts of critical sites out there, whether it be power, water, uh, infrastructure. Um, Jim, you know, that's what Jim does on the physical side, which is, you know, very, very relevant today. Um, so I wanted to, wanted to offer that up, offer Jim's name up. It's a good possibility many of you might have uh, worked with Jim here in Albany as well over the past few years. Next. And also the MSI SAC. Um, you, you know, we work closely with the MSI SAC 24-7. Um, they're operating out there, providing early cyber threat intelligence. And it's really um, a number of key agencies sharing information 24 hours a day uh, to protect our state, local agencies from, from things that are emerging and also things that uh, we're seeing coming coming down coming down on the horizon. Uh, also wanted to mention very briefly, of course, our key partner at the New York State Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Services. Uh, the team over there um, has, you know, incident response team uh, providing very, you know, solid, solid uh, support out here to our state agencies and, and government organizations uh, on the side of cyber threat warning and mitigation. And of course, importantly, uh, incident response. And that's uh, that's a highlight, really, of of you know what CISA has has available, you know, in the field out here, building our partnerships. Um, ask that you take a look at our Shields Up website, and also StopRansomware.gov. Number of really one-stop area of new information that comes out. And, and relevant, actionable uh, information and, and, and tools that we can use to build up uh, our cybersecurity resiliency. And uh, with that, Mark, um, I'll, I'll turn it back to you and open it up for any, any questions. Okay, at this point, I would like to remind attendees that if you have a question for Michael Hastings, uh, our expert, uh, in the field from the federal government. Uh, now's a good time to put those questions in your question panel and I will get them, I will get to them uh, as I receive them. Michael, you you named and listed and, and, and went through a number of tools 
that are available through CISA, how much do those tools uh, cost for a county government or local government in New York State? Great, great question, Mark. Um, those, those, those resources and tools are, are available at no cost. Um, they are, you know, they are funded through our, our government budget, of course, through, through the taxes that we pay. So they, they are available at no cost, which is, which is a great. Yeah, it is great. And that's why we, we wanted to have you here because this is our government partner uh, at the federal level. Um, and, and they are charged with helping counties and local governments and schools in New York State and public entities in New York State uh, put their shields up and, 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 and improve their cybersecurity posture. So for a local government or a county who is just now looking at what they can do uh, to in, improve their cybersecurity posture, Mike, where do you where do you encourage them to start? Because there's a lot of things on your website. There's a lot of tools that you're providing. Where should they start? Uh, I, where, where a great place to start is, uh, Mark, is I really, you know, I would ask, you know, do we understand, you know, where, where are we at in our individual program from a cybersecurity posture? Uh, do we have, you know, do we know where our, our you know, our potential um, shortfalls are? And do we have a, a, do we have a roadmap or a plan to, to close these gaps and, and really be, then really be prepared? We can't do everything. So how do we do that? It really starts, I would say, I would recommend with our, one of our CSET assessments, you know, the ransomware readiness assessment. Are we ready? Are we ready to defend and respond against potential ransomware attack? Um, so the, you know this assessment can be downloaded from stopransomware.com. Uh, an organization or an agency can run through this themselves. Uh, come back. They can contact me, ask questions, or uh, myself or one of my other uh, partners uh, at CISA or one of our partner uh, agencies. We can come out and uh, facilitate this. Uh, really, where the value comes from the CSET, whether it's the uh, external dependencies or whether it's the ransomware, is the conversation of bringing your team in together. And that's also, you know, the, fin the, the finance, you know, finance team, because IT and security, uh, you know, some of these, some of these things, they cost money. So, and our budgets are not unlimited. So we have to be able to articulate, you know, why it is we're asking for asking what we're asking. You know, we, we need end, endpoint protection. Uh, of course, now, um, of course, New York State is, is rolling out a program to offer endpoint protection to our agencies. Um, I know it's a work in progress, and but that, you know, that is enormous right there. We have to have, you know, good endpoint protection. Do we have, you know, solid backup and recovery? Many of us do. Many of us are doing the right things, but do we have it? Do we have it? You know, do we know and do we have it sort of documented where we are, where we want to go? So I would recommend an assessment of of our program, and you know that can be done, you know, either with CISA or as I mentioned. Our partners over at the MSI SAC have a very effective assessment that's that's very similar as well. So yes, yeah, start start with an assessment. You know, are we cyber hygiene? Very easy to set up. It's a phone call. It's an email, and um, you know, request cyber hygiene scanning. You know, what what are we seeing from the outside right away? So between cyber hygiene and the CSET. That, that's where I would recommend would be a great place to start. Mark. Great, thanks, Michael. Uh, now, what if a county wants to um, to uh, to to access and run the vulnerability scanning tool? How what's the process for for accessing that and running it at the county level or any local government level? 
it's really a you know it's a it's a non you know it's a non non in, you know it's an external type of service so really to request it is very easy um, you know it, it's uh, you know you just contact you know sysa.gov or you know send myself an email um, you know my, my email mark you have it I'll just put it out real quick uh, you know michael.hastings at sysa.dhs.gov request it send an email um, we'll pick up the phone and uh, you know make a phone call have a conversation and we can get it started great i'd like to remind people if you have a question now's a great time to ask uh, michael hastings from the sisa what's the best initial point of contact in the event of an emergency or incident now uh, I know you're from the federal government, but you, I, you know I've talked to you uh, dozens of times, Mike, and I know I'm on calls with you with the Division of Homeland Security. So in New York, if a, a county or a local government is involved in an incident, where do they, who do they call first? Another excellent question, one that we hear many times. Uh, really, you know, the best the best person to call is the person that you know that you have in your Rolodex, and that really should be at the local level, is you know our our New York State Department of Homeland Security Incident Response Cyber Protective Team. Uh, the team is over there in Albany. Uh, maybe some of the representatives are on the call. Um, get to know them. Reach out. Get to know them. We have our you know your own agency may have uh, you know. And its cybersecurity team, who is on that team? You know, do we know who they are? Um, that's our personal relationships, the people closest to us. And then, you know, the word will get out. Um, you know, our, our, our partners over at, you know, Dishes may call, you know, we may need to call the FBI. Is it a criminal matter? You know, are they, you know, are they looking for, is it a ransomware extortion? Uh, you know, FBI here in Albany, we work with, with them a lot. They have a very robust, um, you know, they have very robust resources as well in, in cybersecurity. If it's a criminal matter, we want to get them involved. If it's, um, you know, an incident response or a question, yes, we want to call, um, we want to call our New York State. We want to call our, our law enforcement partners. If, if, you know, and then, Depending on the severity of the situation, uh, we bring in additional resources as needed. Um, and of course, you know our number. Uh, our number is always on. So if we can't reach one person, we call another. Um, within our, within our, you know, within our teams and our partnerships. But I would say, you know, the big thing is, you know, get out. You know, go to the conferences. Have the card. You know, the contact. And make that introduction when there when there is an issue um, that the person that you know in cybersecurity is the best person to call. And of course, we're we're always available as well. Thank you, Michael. I'm 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 scrambling here on my uh, on the um, on Google to try to find the the um, dishes uh, cert. Uh, number and I'll post that as soon as I do find that so thank you um, yeah so your f first in your first phone call if you should have an incident is to the the New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services CERT line the cybersecurity incident response team uh, and and they will uh, they will process your call they will get the state police involved uh, and um, as as we know from recent attacks, uh, FBI will get involved and uh, CISA will get involved. So there's a team of folks who uh, of experts who will help you respond in the event of an incident or ransomware attack. But the first call should be to CERT. Oh, and uh, somebody in uh, in the chat just put it in there, and I will share it with everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, any other questions from the team? And Mark, I, I would like to add also is, um, you know, 
the, the, this is also where we really, you know, we want to have our we want to have our organizational incident response plan developed and exercised, um, because our first line of defense really is our our internal response procedures and capabilities. You know, we have a who do we call within our within our team? Do we have our our in our net, our network security personnel? Who's that person on our team that we need to be able to get a hold of right away? That's really key at the at the at the operational level. You know, what do we do here at our desk? What resources do we have? Then we work it up from there. Because timing is everything. Timing is everything. It may be the most important thing that someone may be able to do is to disconnect that internet cable from the network. That could that could that could hold some things off and buy us some time. Impl implement, follow our incident response plan, and then from there we have our numbers, we have our contacts, and we we develop and contain the situation for, in that in that order. Yes, great. And and uh, and and print out your incident response plan too. Uh, don't just leave it in a file. Uh, on your um, on your network because uh, if your network should go down or, or be encrypted and being held ransom, you want to have a copy of your incident response plan printed out and put on your desks or in your in your uh, in a hard copy folder. Uh, should anything happen, you have quick access to it. I have a question um, now. Does New York State impose any regulations on county government related to cybersecurity? Ooh. Do you have an answer to that, Michael? Um, you know, Mark, I caught most of that. Could you could you repeat that question, please? Uh, does New York State impose any regulations on county governments related to cybersecurity? That's uh, I, I'm sure that there are. Yes, there are. There are regulations related to cybersecurity. Um, I believe that um, you know most, if not all, state agencies do have a information security officer that are you know assigned or working with specific agencies. So yes, depending on which agency you're in, uh, yes, there are there are regulations, guidelines, and requirements related to cybersecurity that that are that are within the state. And I'll do a little um, uh, uh, advertisement here. On our website, we have a report called the uh, Cybersecurity Primer for Local Government Leaders. And in that, there is a section on um, the, reg the government, uh, the New York state laws and federal laws that govern things like HIPAA uh, and, and other policies that, that uh, um, would be in effect should a county have a cyber incident. So that's on our website, www.nysac.org. If you look under cybersecurity or, or cyber, uh, there's a, a report called um, Cybersecurity Primer for Local Government Leaders. And there's a section on New York State laws and regulations with regard to cybersecurity. Yes. And to just to add a little bit onto that is, you know, when we're looking at, you know, different types of regulations, you know, be, you know, best practice. One good way to go is, you know, to have, to have have a guideline or a standard to follow. Um, there's there's several of them out there, and from the federal and, and industry critical industry, you know, we closely follow the NIST. Cybersecurity Framework. It's been developed uh, in partnership with industry, uh, with government, and it's it's really the blueprint of you know how do we develop and maintain good cybersecurity practices. You know the NIST Cybersecurity Framework. And we're following recommendations in the framework, and we're developing our policies, procedures uh, along with NIST. We you know, those are the answers right there. Those are the answers cyber insurance is going to be asking. Those are the answers, the questions and answers that 
other auditors may be asking that come in to look at your program. And it's really more than just, you know, we're not here to check, do check the block cybersecurity. We're looking at it, we want to look at it from a risk based perspective. In my particular agency, you know, in my particular field, where we're at, where are we most vulnerable? And then by assessing that vulnerability is where you, you know, develop your plan to close that gap. And that's really what we recommend. Look at it from, from a risk perspective, from where, where you are sitting with your organization, your team, or your industry. So if, you know, if we follow if we follow the NIST framework, um, and we also you know you know the best thing is to get out there with you know your peers. You know what what are our peers doing? What are the best practices? That way we're not trying to invent the wheel, and we can't. We, cybersecurity is not an individual sport. You know we have to have a team. We have to have you know we have to have. Uh, other other friends and partners to help us uh you know to help us work smarter and really you know once we do that we get that conversation going um that's where we learn a lot and uh and really um you know build up build up our resiliency to respond and defend against any cyber attack and i i thank you very much michael hastings you are a friend and a partner to us as we uh, continue down the cybersecurity road, and I appreciate your time and expertise today. I want to just plug one other thing. Uh, on next week is the legislative conference, the NISAC 2023 Legislative Conference. We will be holding an IT task force meeting at two o'clock at that uh, NISAC Legislative Conference. And then following that IT task force meeting, Michael will be on a panel talking about the anatomy of a cyber attack, the lessons learned from Suffolk County. So I wanna invite all of the attendees on today's call to those two events on Monday, should you be in Albany and should you be at the NISAC Legislative Conference. Again, thank you very much, Michael, for your time today. And uh, thank you all for joining us. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Have a great afternoon, everyone.